Hey, what's up guys? My name is The Cherno. So I was just sitting here working on Hazel, specifically the Hazel development branch. And I thought that it would be a cool idea to just kind of show you guys what I'm up to. Specifically, I'm working through this kind of issue that I have here. And I thought that instead of just working through it all by myself in my little office, I would kind of just film myself working through this issue and show you hopefully the outcome and me actually solving it. So for those of you who don't know, the Hazel development branch is a version of the game engine series, a version of Hazel where I've basically done a whole lot of work because the way that I kind of make the game engine series is that while whilst I do pretty much film a video every week and I plan that video and I do all of the stuff kind of required to write code for that specific video, obviously in my mind, like I need to be well ahead of my videos in in Hazel, right? So it's because of two reasons. First of all, I mean, I need to know where the series is going. It would be kind of very um, short-sighted, I guess, of me to just plan for like the next few episodes without kind of seeing the big picture. But also it's kind of important to me to also make sure that I'm actually leading the, the development of Hazel somewhere like into like a successful place, right? I can't just kind of be like, oh yeah, yeah, eventually we'll add this stuff. And in my mind, I'm like, well, I hope I know how to do that. Or I hope that that's gonna work out in the end. That would kind of be, let's just say that wouldn't be ideal. So what I do in my spare time is I just work on this game engine called Hazel. And I kind of just work on this version of Hazel whenever I kind of feel like it, whenever I want to, as much as I can really. And I've developed it a lot, a lot more kind of past the point where we're up to in the game engine series so that essentially I know where that game engine series, where, where all of those videos are heading. So for example, and I'll show you a little bit of the Hazel development branch here as well, but basically like I've got, you know, a full PBR kind of scene, I've got animation, I've got like a bit of like an editor where you can like, well, it's more of a viewer where you can like load all of your different textures and any model file and display that stuff, play, play around with the lighting setup, that kind of stuff. So I've developed it quite a bit. Um, and if you do want access to that, you can actually get access to that just straight away by going to patreon.com forward slash the Cherno. Pledging there, apart from just getting access, just supports this channel a lot. So thank you obviously to all of the patrons that make this kind of stuff possible because I wouldn't be sitting here working on Hazel and working on all these amazing videos for you guys if it wasn't for those people supporting me on Patreon. So those people doing that, seriously, like you're the people that make this stuff possible and I'm so thankful for that. So anyway, this problem that I've got, Let's take a look. If we just boot up Hazel here, so we've got the Hazel engine here. This is probably the first time for a lot of you guys seeing it, so I'll give you a little bit of a tour. Um, what we have here is basically two different ways of viewing things right now. We've got model and spheres, and this kind of whole section here, by the way, is like the kind of, uh, I guess, level editor sort of kind of section. I mean, right now it's obviously just like a set of, maybe I'll put this over here to make it a little bit better. Um, it's basically just a bunch of environment settings that we have here, as well as this kind of model stuff, um, which lets us kind of pick a mesh that we want to render, pick uh, albedo, normals, metalness, roughness, that kind of stuff. We can even dynamically reload certain shaders and do stuff like that, which is pretty cool um, and very useful, of course, for development. You can see that we can play around with like the light color here um, and you can see uh, that there. And in fact, um, everything here is, Oh, and we can play with like the exposure because you can see this looks a little bit overexposed because the light's very bright, but luckily we're in an HDR pipeline so we can just dye that down and you can see we get all of the detail back if we just simply lower the exposure. Anyway, so we have this kind of scene and um, what I the primary purpose for this scene was to test physically based rendering, of course. And I mean, like it looks pretty bad in certain cases. That's just because we're not filtering. If I actually turn on radiance pre-filtering properly, you can see that it works correctly, but it takes like a long time. You can see what the lag is like here. It's a bit crazy. Um, that's just because we're doing it live. Whereas usually you would actually bake it into um, the cube map MIP levels, which is something that I definitely have on my to-do list. But anyway, we have this kind of PBR scene, which is lovely. But in adding animation, which is what we see here, I noticed that, well, the reflection isn't really working correctly. Um, it's quite weird. And that's interesting because they're basically, I mean, right now they're two separate shaders because they need to be, but in the beginning they were two, that like the shaders were identical. So why is it working here? And why is it not working here? Especially because like the fragment shader doesn't need to change. So there are a few uh, issues that, that could cause this specifically, the reason that it might not work for animation, um, and if we kind of just, uh, let me just bring up that, we've got mesh debug here as well. Let me just bring that up here and um, just pause this animation. I might just break this off. 
and pop it here. So we can we can uh, scrub through the animation here. Um, and I'll actually just drop the roughness down so that it's super reflective so we can see everything. Um, so that's reflecting the sky, it looks like, although it's weird that it's kind of solid blue. If we kind of scrub through this, um, you can see that as we as the gun kind of rotates up, so does the environment map, right? So straight away, just by looking at this, I can kind of tell that the reason that's happening, right? Look at that, it's, it's just rotating with it. It's almost certainly because the way that this animation is skeletal animation, which means that what we have here is a bunch of bones, and in the shader specifically, we're getting the information about the bones and we're applying uh, the the kind of uh, the transformation matrices from each bone to the appropriate vertices based on like the vertices that that bone actually affects and the weights and all of that stuff. Um, so that's how it's being kind of animated, right? That's happening in the vertex shader. So as it's being animated, we have that transformation matrix, but it looks like we're just not actually sending any information about that bone transform to the uh, to the fragment shader at all. Because again, like when, when it comes time to calculate um, like the view vector from the camera to the normal and like so that we can reflect it properly and sample from the cube map, it looks like we're just not, we're not factoring in that, um, that uh, bone transformation at all. And if we actually look at the slide, go back, this is actually quite a good example. If we look at the slide, go back, it's hard to see because it's, it's almost completely blue, which is very interesting. But if you look at the slide, go back, which happens here, uh, and we can actually even play this in, in super slow-mo, um, you can see that it's not, um, that slide isn't like it, it's just completely painted on. Like you can, this is actually a good place, I think, to look at it. See, that's completely not changing. So it looks like both the translation and the rotation, none of that's being applied. So we definitely need to take a look at the shader and see what the problem is. So here we have the animation shader that we're being that's being used. And really all we need to look at is the vertex shader, I think, because um, I mean, if we look at the uh, fragment shader, specifically the part of it that does all of this stuff. You can see the view vector here is calculated by using the world position. And then also we're definitely using normals in a lot of places to actually, uh, you know, calculate, I guess, the reflection vector and certain other things that we need to actually um, uh, light, I guess, the model using IBL, which is image-based lighting, which is where that kind of cube map plays a part. Um, so if we take a look at this, uh, yeah, so it looks like our world position and normal World normals are being multiplied by the model matrix, which is correct. But it looks like this normal is just completely being left alone, which is interesting. By normal is also being left alone. Um, this is all fine. Um, and then world position as well, which we do use. Again, that's just, that's taking into account the model matrix, which is correct, right? Um, normal should also take into account the model matrix. That's odd that it isn't. Um, because if we rotate our sphere, for example, the normals aren't gonna be rotated with it. So that's actually one thing we should fix. It's kind of hard to demonstrate here, but um, that's just something additional that I've just spotted. And then also um, both of both the world position, normal, binormal, and um, the world normals are probably fine the way they are. I don't think, I'm not even sure what we really use them for. Um, so we use them if we're using a normal texture, but that should be okay, I think. Um, so what we really need to do is I think for this problem especially, we should uh, make sure that we're taking this bone transform. And for world position, we need both the um, translation and rotation, of course, because it's a world position. So we'll make sure that we just multiply that as a mat four. However, for normals, we don't need the translation. In fact, we don't want the translation. So we can just cast this to a mat three when we multiply it. And that will, of course, only uh, essentially multiply translate uh, rotation and scale and rotation is specifically what we're looking for. We shouldn't have any, um, well, scale matrices should be fine as well. Um, same thing needs to happen to our binormals as well. Uh, and that looks pretty good. Now, world normals does not take into account the bone matrix, but based on the usage, I don't, I don't think I want to touch that yet, um, just because I think that um, that might not be something that we need to necessarily touch. Anyway, we're not using any uh, normal map here anyway for this example. So we've got world position normal and binormal that's being multiplied in. Uh, let's see if that made any difference. I'm pretty sure that that would fix our problem. And okay, look at that. So it looks completely different now. Um, if I just kind of zoom in here, 
Um, it looks completely different. Let's see if it looks right. So what I'll do again is I will pause the animation. I'll dial the roughness down all the way. Okay, we're actually reflecting stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, let's see if when the slide moves back, if the reflection stays static and it does, right? So you can see that slide is moving back here, but the reflection staying the way that it should be, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and then finally, the rotation is the other thing that kind of interested me. So that rotation looks fine. So if we look at it, yep, the, you can see the reflection is kind of moving because we're rotating. And then finally, that gun being shot as well. Looks like that's working correctly. So if we just go and let's just play this in like really slow motion and see what this looks like. All right, that looks pretty good. And <laughs> we can follow the bullet here. The bullet is rotating and the reflection looks pretty good to me. Okay, cool, All right? And then if we look at our spheres, they look uh, correct also. So that was just quite a simple problem that just had to do with um, making sure that once we added animation and all those bone transformations, we also applied them to the world position and the normals. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Let me know what you think and if you wanna see more of this kind of stuff in the future because this is quite fun to make and as I'm kind of working here, it's nice to almost have a bit of a development log, I guess. I'm just showing you guys what I'm up to, any kind of problems that I'm working through as well. Just to kind of share those with you guys, I think it's a cool idea. Drop a like below if you enjoyed this and a comment as well if you wanna see more of this kind of stuff in the future. Don't forget to support this channel on Patreon and make this kind of stuff possible in the future as well, support the development of Hazel and all of my videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.